This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plan, celebrating 77 years of providing Tennesseans with high quality health coverage at affordable prices. Visit FBHP.com today to learn about their history in Tennessee and to get a quote. That's FBHP.com. Glad to have you with us. I'm Mike Keith. This is Jaquan Jackson, rookie Tulane. ATM. Let's get it. How you doing? Automatic touchdown machine. Yes, sir. Who calls you ATM? Back at Tulane, you know, they made the name of automatic touchdown. I always found myself in the end zone. So, you know, um, once they got that name and it started going, I was just excited about it. And I just took it along with it and ran with it. Nice. That's pretty big. You know, Pinnacle Financial Partners may be interested in working with you. They're the team bank, so they may be. <laughs> that would be nice. Maybe Jaquan Jackson going through the ATM because he is. Automatic touchdown, man. The automatic touch. I like that. Yes, sir. All right, so we we love Tajay Spears. You have to know that. And um, so we got to get into some Tajay Spears stuff right off the bat here. Yeah. You were roommates at Tulane? Yes, sir. What's the worst thing about having Tajay Spears as a roommate? The worst thing? Yeah. What annoyed you? Nothing, really. Really? It was always exciting, you know. He always a person just to, to have around you that uplift you no matter what. If he's down or I'm down, we... We both pick each other up. So nothing annoyed you? Nothing. He didn't like leave peanut butter on the counter, nah. not pick up his laundry? Nah. He was raised well. He was raised well? Yes, sir. He's a lot of fun. Is he always a lot of fun? I mean, it's always. always. How did you guys meet? I probably say we played together seven on seven versus and when we was in high school our last year a senior, we played in the Southeastern tournament seven on seven and they beat us to get to the championship, which they, they won a championship and then later, weeks later, you know, we went on to, to college and we both saw each other again for the first time. His dad and my dad and my mom and his, and his mom was there, you know, just helping them move in. And once we got into the part that the dorm rooms and stuff, it was just I seen Tajay. And from that day on, we became friends. You know, we built a relationship to where I learned what happened in his background and then what happened to me. So he was at your draft party. Did you think there was a chance you were going to the Titans? Did he think there was a chance you were going to the Titans? You know, you always got a, a opinion where you, where, where you would like to go and where you want to go or where, what team wants you to go. Uh, you know, like the, the whole process of me talking to different teams, you know, I never talked to the Titans that much, you know. You know, Tyke right. Ty came down to the um, pro day and, and had watched me work out with the pro day and the other guys at Tulane, you know. Um, but the exciting part about it is that it would be like once a week that I'd talk to Tajay dad and he'd be like, man, you're going to be a Titan. Like he spoke it to, to existence, you know, he manifested. And, and and when it happened, I just looked at him. Well, I first I looked at Tajay, then my family, then I looked at him and he was like, and like I told you so, you know, but it's exciting to be here, you know, just not even just Tajay, just to get around all the vets and, you know, um, Coach Callahan and other coaches and our GM and our sister GM and our owner just to meet them and just the great culture they build it around here, you know, that's the biggest thing. Okay, so Tyke Tolbert, the receiver coach, mm -hmm. kind of a legendary receiver coach. He's been in the league for a long time. He's a Louisiana guy. Yep. Yes, sir. So he, LSU, he was at Monroe, he was at Lafayette. Wasn't at Tulane, but basically right. everywhere else or so it seems. Do you already have a rapport from that Louisiana background? You can say yes. You know, um, as you said, he was at the, the one that I knew about. I didn't know about Monroe, but I knew about the, the, the Death Valley. You know, he showed, oh, sure. us, he showed us yesterday that um, I said, yeah, Death Valley. And he played there at LSU, had a great career. You know, he coached a lot of athletes and um, professional level to Odell Beckham, to Anquan Bolden, to, you know, DJ Moore, Darnell Mooney, to et cetera, Wes Welker. You know, so his resume is look good on paper, you know, and on the field you can see. Now he got a lot of other guys that he's coaching too. And the biggest thing with me is just coming in the receiver room with a lot of guys and you know you got Kelvin really you got D Hop and you know you just got Tyler Boyd and you know you got Trillenberg and etc. You got Mason and you got Kyle Phillips and then you got Kyrus Jackson. You know it goes down the line. So it's it's a lot for me and other guys to, to to push each other to be great. You have eight siblings. Yes sir. Five sisters, three brothers, right? Where do you rank in terms of age within the nine? Third oldest. Third oldest. So okay. So 
it goes from age what to what right now? I'd probably say 36 to 12 or 13. Oh, wow. So you like being a big brother then? Oh, huh? yeah, for sure. I make sure they're straight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you're a guy who's done it the right way. And that's what everybody at Tulane said. This is a guy who's, who's been the kind of guy you want to be around, not just as a football player, but as a human being. Does it come from that big family structure? Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, um, my great-grandmother, she's uh, 104 right now, still living to this day. You know, she, she built the foundation on my mom's side. And, you know, on my dad's side, my dad built the foundation, you know. So me growing up, I lived with my grandmother till I was in third grade. And then I moved with my dad from third grade to to high school, you know, um, my mom, me and my mom was always had a great relationship, but she was living outside of the school district, so I couldn't stay with her because if I would have did, it would have had caused trouble, you I know, got you. for, you know, how that go. But, you know, I talked to my mom and dad each and every day, so that was the biggest. All right, Ed Reed is your uncle. Oh, yeah, Ed, that's it. Pro Football Hall of Famer Ed Reed. Yes, sir. By the way, he drove us crazy. <laughs> but, that's another, but that's another story. What have you been able to take from Uncle Ed Reed into this experience becoming a pro football player? First of all, you know, just being a, um, a business person, you know, handling everything right. You know, I prepared myself well, as you said, that when, once I got into to college my freshman year, I knew how to be a, a pro already, you know, to being on time, taking notes, doing the right thing, being in the right spot, and just taking people under my wing and just being a leader, you know. And he was, as you said, he was a great player on the football field, but not on the field, but off the field, you know, he did things in the community to help the kids, to impact the kids, you know. And as growing up, just watching what he did and how he gave back to the community. So he gave a camp each summer back in, in Destra and St. St. Rose, Louisiana, just to give back to the kids, you know. And the, the biggest thing that I do is, after every game, if it was a win, lose, a draw, you know, I clean up the locker room, because I think about it, if that was my family, being a janitor, to come back and pick up behind grown men, it wouldn't be right, you know. You know I wouldn't want my, my grandma picking up no dirty draws or dirty towels other um grown men um, have in the, in the locker room, you know? So I took the ownership of doing that and making sure the locker room was clean because it just, it's how you do one thing, it's how you do everything. So every detail is important to Jaquan Jackson. For sure. Yeah. Talk me through Darius Raynod and the relationship with him. You know, we, we haven't returned a punt for a touchdown since Darius Raynod was here. <laughs> and I read in the bio that the team put out that you talk to him weekly? Yes, sir. How yes, sir. That, how is that relationship uh, a big part of your life? I get on to the other part when you said the relationship with Dad's right now. You know, we lived in the St. Charles Parish where he lived right around the corner. His mom and dad live on Estate and I live on Killing Street. So it was like a two minute drive to my house, to his house where he grew up at, you know, and then we went to the same high school, Harvard High School. He played in 03 when he went to the state championship and won when he was playing against Leonard Fournette and them when he for yeah. at St. Aug, you know. So as I got older and just got into college, you know, at that time after he played for the Titans, the year I was in high school, he played for the Chicago Bears, and he always come back and visit us, and we just built a relationship on from there, you know. And once he found out that I got drafted to the Tennessee Titans, he called me, and that was the first thing. The first thing he said, I bet you ain't gonna break my record. And he started sending me the records and everything I said, and guess what, when I find out the records, I'm gonna break it. So he, he ran back two in one game. In one game, and he had 106. And, the, and that's the time. last time, yeah, I mean, he, he, he had some great special teams moments for this team. Speaking of big moments, is the 87-yard touchdown catch in the Cotton Bowl against USC your signature play from Tulane? I wouldn't say that. Really? No, I wouldn't say that. You know, it's, um, it was exciting to, to help the team. You know, the biggest thing was I try not to get stuck up on what I did, you know, and how I did it. You know, I just want to make sure that the team right. You know, I'm not a guy to worry about um, 87 yards, 87 yards, 87 yards. You got to think about it. Uh, Tajay had 221 yards, you know. Yeah. Deuce Watts, the receiver, made a good catch to put us in the, in the red zone to go in overtime to, to win the game, you know. Uh, Alex Bauman caught the winning touchdown, you know. Michael Pratt got the first down to get us to the, the catch Deuce Watts made, you know. So it all plays into our motto was 1-0 and, and just doing everything like 1% and worry about the man that – to the next or the right and the left of you. So that was the biggest thing. Try not to put, I put the team before me, you know what I mean? Devin Hester is your guy. Yeah. You watch Devin Hester highlights before every game? Yes, sir. Why Devin Hester? Why is that the person that you focus on? 
you know, like once you're playing football and just you always say who you put your game as, you know, as a receiver is different, a different guy. And as a punt returner is, is Devin Hester, you know, what he did at the Miami Hurricanes and when he came to went to the Chicago Bears and, you know, he, he made history, 14 punt returns, six kick returns, you know, 20 total all together in the Hall of Fame of doing what he did. Just But just seeing what he did and just the process, the way he moves and just the the way he took it as a game and not even just him, you know, it still had, you had Jacoby Jones, you know, he was a good returner, but I probably say Devin Hester is my favorite and the way he did everything. And my goal is to one day just sit down and talk to him and see what he's seen and what made him to be the elite returner that he was. And that time will come, you know. I'm not rushing it, you know. Sure. God working mysterious ways, so, you know, when the time is right, he, a guy will make it happen. But you're part of that fraternity now. You're in the NFL. Have you just stopped for a moment and thought, I am the top part of the 1% of all football players who m- most will never make it here. You're here. Yes, sir. It haven't hit me yet, but it will eventually, you know. I mean, you're in the same league Devin Hester was. You yep. made it. And I think about what you're saying about Devin Hester, and it strikes me that your Uncle Ed Reed was the same sort of a guy with the ball in his hands. Is that when you get your hands on the football, you not only want to run by guys, you want to make guys miss – make things happen with the football. Is that electric nature what you want to be known for as a football player? I just want to be known as Jaquan Jackson. You know, um, it's not about uh, he he can do a punt return, he can do kick return, he can do receive. I just want to be known as Jaquan Jackson and a guy who's like everything positive about me. You know, I don't want it to be like just one, just like you said, 87 yard touchdown. I don't want to be known for that. You know, I just want to be that known for I help in the community, you know, I help with the organization or the culture, help the team, you know, whatever in the asset of that, you know, um, I'm always about how can I make everybody else around me better. That's good stuff. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you. Stay right there for a second. Had a chance to talk with a former Titan, Steve Jackson at practice the other day. You remember he was on the 99 team and was a super player in the secondary, coached here in 16 and 17, and now he's back as the secondary safety coach Here's my chat from uh, earlier this week with Stevie Jack, Steve Jackson. Steve Jackson listed as secondary slash safeties. Mm -hmm. So is this the type of job where you're doing the same sort of role as a coach that you did for us in nine years as a player where you're sort of wherever you need to be at whatever time? Always. I mean, that's that's kind of the responsibility of a coach. You have to be ready to adjust. Anything comes up, you have to be ready to coach it. And I just appreciate the opportunity. You know, they gave me to be able to take what I've learned over the years and give it to these players. What's it like working with Chris Harris and Denard Wilson? Awesome. Awesome. You know, we all speak the same language. We have the same motivations. We have the same end results um, in mind. Every time something comes in, comes up, we all speak the same way. We finish each other's sentences, actually. You have five safeties that you've been working with so far. Obviously, more to come. But from what you've seen out of this group, anything jump out so far? Well, everything. Their worth ethic, the way they stick together, the way they communicate. Um, they're just all continuing to grow every day. It's been a real pleasure to coach these guys and watch them grow. What's the most exciting part of the upside, the possibilities with Imani Hooker at the safety position? It's all upside. I mean, with all of these guys, it's all upside. They're all young, they're all hard workers, they're all smart, and they're all tough. I mean, it it gives us the opportunity to take it as far as we want to. The ball was something that you always played very well. When you were here as an assistant coach, Kevin Byard had his eight interception season. Are there things that you can talk about with Amani Hooker and the rest of the group to make them more aware of where the football is and, and obviously possibly taking it away? Mm-hmm. One word, fundamentals. Fundamentals. You look right, you do right. You know, just having their fundamentals, eyes, feet, and hands in the right places on every snap, and the ball will find you. Talk to me about Elijah Molden for a second. Uh, when he was moved to safety last year, I thought, hmm, Steve Jackson. That, that was the player that I thought of from the from the era is that physically and, and in terms of his knowledge and his savvy, mm-hmm. that was mm-hmm. what stuck out to me. Can you see some of that? Uh, yeah, but I, I can see it in all the players. But, but specifically about Elijah, I mean, he's a very cognitive 
player. I mean, he thinks about everything before he does it. He's very instinctive. Um, there's a lot of things that he does well. And, you know, he's kind of like a jack of all trades. And he's beginning to master all the fundamentals. For you, what's the biggest difference in a safety's job from the time when you played to, to, to now in today's game? It's really not much difference. You're, you're still the angels of the defense. Anything, have there's nobody behind you but the referee, and it's rare that they make tackles and get interceptions. So you have to be on point and understand that you have to have everybody's back. Are there small fundamental things that we're going to notice in safety responsibility in Denard Wilson's defense in this secondary than maybe what we've seen in the past? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so give me a couple examples just to be a nice guy. Well, I mean, I mean, our intention every week is to our job is to get takeaways, and and that's our emphasis every time we step on the field. Does it happen every play? No, but the intention is to get our hands on a lot of balls. Our intention is to make our tackles. Our t intentions are to make our calls, and if we do that consistently, well, then we'll be okay. How do you improve this group as blitzers? Um, I mean, that's a, that's a good question. It, it always starts with the guys around you. Anybody who ever gets a lot of sacks never does it all by themselves. Uh, every blitz is designed that there's 11 guys that have a responsibility and a job. His job, particularly, is just one part of the 11. And so if he does his job and everybody else does their job, then the sacks will come. What do these young players coming in have to do to impress Steve Jackson to be able to potentially be part of the 90 and to be able to have a chance to jump in and, and maybe uh, make a contribution to the point that they could be on the 53? Well, it's not about Steve Jackson. They, they, they have to impress people in the front office. They have to impress the head coach. They have to impress the coordinator. And most importantly, they have to impress their teammates because those are the guys that got to be out there and trust them every single play. Steve Jackson, let's wrap up with this. You've been gone seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, you saw from the start. You came when the building opened at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park. What's sort of the biggest change <laughs> in the Titans that jumps out to Steve Jackson from not only your time as a player, but also your two years in 2016 and 17 as an assistant coach here before? I'm going to tell you what, the whole city, most importantly, has changed since when we first got here. You know, I think that was one of the good things that as soon as we became the Titans, our trip to the Super Bowl kind of energized the whole city. And, you know, when we came back, that was our intention to re-energize the city. And the intention now is to re-energize the city and get back on the winning path. Steve Jackson with me there. This is a former safety. This is James Williams, draft pick from the U from Miami. James Williams for SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. Whether you buying or selling tickets to the Titans game, to any other live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to go. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of the Titans. So Titans fans can fan. I'm glad you're here. You're big deal coming out of high school. I mean, huge deal. I'm going to read this. Five-star prospect by, among others, 24-7 and rivals. Number 13 ranked overall player in the country by 24-7. Rivals had you number 19. Several more people had you in the top 20. And you were the number one safety nationally by those two organizations, 24-7 and Rivals. And then uh, other organizations on three and others had you rated very highly as well. What's it like coming out of high school and being that well known? I mean, not even coming out of high school. It started for you when you were 15. What's that like? I mean, it's a, it's a great experience. It's very competitive. I'm a very competitive person. Coming out of uh, South Florida was a lot of competition, so it brought the best out of me and allowed me to be top 20 in the nation. Yeah, that's amazing. So you were always a safety. Yeah. And then Lance Guidry comes in at Miami and he says, you know, you're a safety, but we want to get you closer to the line of scrimmage. When you started playing some linebacker at the U, what did that feel like? for you and did you sort of know that's what you were going to be on the next level? I mean, it, it felt very natural. It came like, 
like, it came fast, I could say, because Gidry came out of nowhere when they, when they got him. But it was, it was a great experience. And I knew it was coming because of my size and my frame and my intelligence of knowing football. So it, it, it's kind of like an easy transition for me. Yeah, because safeties are like quarterbacks on defense. You, you see the whole thing. You, you have to know where everybody is. Sometimes you have to move people around. So you get a real sense of the game, don't you? Yeah, I say, I say my knowledge from safety, moving to linebacker could, could help me and could help the team, that the Titans that drafted me to help us be a better team overall. So I feel like it helped me in the long run. How was the linebacker experience for you at the Senior Bowl? I mean, it was great to, to get around like top guys as trying to be in the position where I want to go. So it was, it was a great experience to get my feet wet a little bit. You know, I ain't never, that was my first time actually getting coached at linebacker. So I, I took some aviance and some clues with me and I learned a lot there. What's been, as you've, as you've made the move, or at least started to make the move from safety to linebacker, what's been the main thing that you've learned about how the game changes between those two positions? Everything is faster. <laughs> like, literally everything, like feet work, hand placement, the plays. You in every play, whether it's run or pass. Um, you in the middle of the field, so you, you got to get to the ball everywhere you got to go. So, I mean, it's a, it's a big difference, but it, it's kind of like natural to me because I'm a ball player so yeah so I'm not a scout but I know what I read and what they said is that James Williams is better the closer he is to the line of scrimmage which is why people have thought the transition from safety to linebacker would be so good for you do you agree with that assessment and the second part of the question is if you if you don't agree with that assessment why I mean, I agree to it because you can li- you can line me up anywhere. I can play anywhere, wherever you want me to play. But I say, yeah, it, <laughs> okay, it, it's great. Okay, now here's the one I like the best, though. And I know this is true, even though I'm not a scout. James Williams hits like Mike Tyson. <laughs> you know who Mike Tyson is, right? Yeah. You're aware of him. I it's kind of my era, but I think a lot of he sort of a lot of people know him well. I mean, you put it on some dudes. I, I mean, you get there, you go through people at contact. It's not, it's not just they're going backwards, they're going sideways and backwards. That, for all the things, for the one five nine ten, the four six five forty, the the vertical, the broad jump and all that, seems to me your biggest skill is you knock the crap out of people. Have you, have you always been that aggressive? And where do you think that ability to hit like that comes from? I mean, I, I feel like it comes from the heart. It's got to be a want to. You got to want to hit. You got to want to love contact. A lot of people don't like contact. So I'm a person that embrace contact. I love it. And I like to deliver the hit instead of getting hit. James, make me understand that. Because the sayings made, a lot of people don't like contact. I get that. But people who really, really like contact like you obviously why why do you why do you like it so much i mean it, it, it's kind of a reliever for me I I, I I i bring something to the table that you can't coach you can't coach contact you can't coach one to go hit somebody so it's like it's already engraved in me it's like a tattoo on me so i'm coming to tattoo people <laughs> <laughs> well it's fun to watch i mean You're the best highlight tape of any defensive player I saw this year for just sheer fun. Special teams, you're made for that, and you have a lot of experience doing that. Uh, That's obviously where you get to hit some people too. So your whole thing is just put me out there, I'll go wherever. I want want, want to do whatever it takes to make the teams, the Tennessee Titans great. Whatever they want me to do, I'm willing to do it. I go play hole snapper if you want me to. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. I just want to make sure that The team is great and always pushing in the right direction. You're 21 years old and you've had really an eventful 21 years, no doubt about it. And as as that five-star, five-star, five-star prospect, and then now you're coming out and you're a seventh round pick and you're fighting to change positions and make the club. Um, What in your heart prepares you for this moment to take on this next challenge playing in the National Football League? I mean, just, just willing to come to work every day, put my head down and get better each, 
I ain't gonna get better one day or two days. It, it takes time. Got to build brick layers and just want to put my head down, keep grinding, and just stay focused. Does everybody call you Dub? Yes. 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 That's beautiful. <laughs> it's got to be weird not wearing twenty though. Yeah. I mean, You've worn twenty your whole life, right? Facts. I mean, I just gotta adjust to it. And I mean, the number don't make you. You made the number. So here's the goal: put up so many numbers go to so many Pro Bowls, make all pro, and then you can buy it off Tony Pollard. Uh, that's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, love meeting you. Appreciate and so you. thrilled you're here. Thank you for taking time. Thank you. That's James Williams. James Dub Williams. Everybody calls him Dub. Or you can call him Seat Geek. Yes, Whatever. sir. Whatever. He's in. Tighten up. Uh, tighten up indeed. For James Williams, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us. Thank the you. The OTP. Bye -bye.